We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up, up. Bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling, where we talk to awesome people that work on camera, behind the camera, and everywhere in between here at AEW, just learning more about the company and the amazing people that make this team. It's uh, absolutely incredible. Speaking of team, how's my friend Will Washington feeling today? <laughs> Not great. No. <laughs> it was like one of the first things I was warned about when starting in AEW uh, and being on the road so much is that, you know, I, I work in a business where I am constantly on planes in airports Mm -hmm. and it's also a very handshake oriented business and being so i have never been more sick in my life than i've gotten over the last year or so it it feels like maybe once a month really but then i feel like i built up like my first few months in AEW, it was like i i was getting sick all the time and then i must have built up some kind of immunity because then i went like a year and i just was not sick and then this week, it just hit me. I was coming home from TV, and it just hit me on the plane. And then I landed, and it just started getting worse and worse. And now I'm just, like, here and raspy and congested. Yeah, I feel like I get sick less often mm-hmm. because of the same reasons. Like, I'm on airplanes all the time. Uh, yeah. When we have a show, we have, like, near... 250 300 people backstage and then you have crowds of thousands of people so you're just sort of around enough people that like the immunity does kind of build up like i said it killed me the first couple of months i was just getting sick all the time dude yeah i think i i can't remember because it was like five years ago if that happened but it probably did but it's one of those things where like i don't get sick often anymore but right after the weekend i worked in arlington it was like three days so and with dynamite it was like four shows in five days, I got so sick. And the fact that I don't get sick anymore, I was just a huge baby about it. Like, I can't move. I'm so tired. This is terrible. Just hawking up terrible shit everywhere. Like, it was so bad. But it's one of those things where even though it's bad, it's great because we work at such an awesome place. And I'm excited. I'm excited to be healthy because it's like, cool, I get to travel and see all my friends. And this is great. (laughs) Yeah, like I I, I always look forward to the relief. Um, And so I said all that to say that uh, on this particular show, I will probably give the reins more so to my good buddy, Aubrey Edwards. Happy uh, to help. Yeah, but I, I, I will say I'm very excited about this show because we've got some very, very cool guests today. Who do we got here, Aubrey? We are joined today by some of my new favorite friends. We're joined by like so many people. We have so many guests on this podcast. We've got the Von Ericks. We've got Kevin. We've got Ross. And we've got Marshall. Hey, guys. How you doing today? How are you today? Guys? Hey. We're good. Thank you for having us. It's good. I also just wanted to uh, say thank you for all of the professional podcast equipment. You guys all look like freaking pros right now. This is great. Keyword. That is pretty crazy. We've yeah. never gotten that before. So this is uh, foreign for us to, <laughs> to, to, to be prepared. Oh, man. No, honestly, th- this is, I think for our listeners, this is going to be a great experience for them as everybody's going to sound crystal clear. Yeah, and high quality. Sound, I know, right? This is a definitely professional podcast. Yeah, you know, I, I love that you all use StreamYard because it's, uh, it's just, it makes it a lot easier and we use it for uh, our podcast as well. But when we have like an older wrestler on, he'll they'll use their phone or whatever. And I forget who it was, but we had somebody on and it, they were on their cell phone. And it basically sounded like they're in a wind tunnel the whole time. And yep. they turned the phone around and they're sitting by one of those huge floor fans. <laughs> yeah. You barely pick up what they were saying the whole time. So this does help having microphones. But that's actually a good uh, transition point for a sec. Because uh, tell us about the, the Von Eriks podcast. Yeah, so we uh, we started a podcast. Ross, how long uh, how long have we been doing the podcast? A few months now, right? Probably about four months, maybe. Yeah, it's called the Von Eric Podcast. And so uh, in, on that one channel, we have Ross and I, our show, and then my sister and my cousin Holly, my Uncle Carrie's daughter, they have growing up Von Eric. It, which is really cool because they talk about, you know, when they just growing up, growing up in the sportatorium, growing up around wrestling. And then they have a lot of second, third generation, uh, not not necessarily wrestlers, but just, you know, children of wrestlers on, but some, some wrestlers or whatever. And then me and Ross, we talk about anything on ours. We had Bill Goldberg on recently and Rob Van Dam and 
it's cool just to catch up with people and talk. And then we've been doing Q and A's and they love that with my dad. Cause my dad is, he's a one liner King. He's great at one liners. Oh yeah. No pressure, dad. <laughs> <laughs> <No> pressure. <laughs> so first off, I want to start and say, congratulations. You guys are the ring of honor world six man champions. Oh, man. This is incredible. I feel very lucky because I got to hand you guys your championships after an incredible match at battle of the belts. So it's, Ross and Marshall, along with Dustin Rhodes, which is just kind of crazy if you think about it, that you have in 2014 champions with both the Rhodes family and the Von Eric family. 2024. So, 2024. I don't even know what year it is. My, my bingo card's all messed up. But like, it's it's crazy, right? So Ross, let's start with you. What is What does this feel like for you to hold gold with your brother and someone like Dustin? Man, it really didn't completely sink in until a few days later it all happened at once like that was all a surprise for the wrestlers to come out there shibata and all these crazy you know we have so much respect for these guys you by the way were an amazing referee me and marshall were talking about it after oh yeah it was extremely smooth very good experience but it's surreal and having my dad there i mean words can't even really describe it it was uh i'm glad that the world got to see that wrestling moment right there it was it was huge for us marshall what about you we wanted people to to because we we got a a lot of new people coming in after the movie that want to you know want to know more about my dad and we want them to know that there's a happy ending because my dad he's one of the most joyful dudes i've ever met he's constantly walking around with a smile on his face he has over 15 grandchildren just constantly all over him. He's on the four wheeler. He's the best babysitter ever. He's his cup runneth over, <laughs> you know, he's, he's a, yeah, he's, that's yeah, he's a, one of the <laughs> happiest guys ever, but to be able to experience that, cause we've had moments that are beautiful moments in the ring with dad. But what was weird is as Ross and I have gotten into wrestling, it's been almost like a quest to get to know our uncles better. Cause my brother and I, we, we've, you know, th these guys were our heroes and, we have a ton of nieces and nephews, so we try to be the uncles that we didn't that we didn't have, and we would have loved to, you know, have our uncles around growing up. And we had a little bit of my uncle Carrie or whatever, but to go and experience that with Dustin, and then my dad being there to witness it, you know, Dustin said something, you know, that was, it meant a lot to me. But his dad wasn't able to witness what what had happened that night, but there was almost like closure in a way him being there seeing that our dad you know being there as well and my dad was almost there on dusty's behalf it was just a beautiful real moment kind of off what my brother said you really are the the our favorite person up up over there at aw you really it's, yeah we brought it up like three times we're not just yeah we brought it up three times you're the cool the whole time like during the match too like i've never had a referee like just update me on how the match is going, how I look. And it, it was tell you guys you're doing awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh I, I think every referee should should do that because it built my confidence up so much. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm doing good. Cause you don't know. You really don't know. You're going no, off. No, I'm like, hey, dude, that bump looked crazy. You okay? Yeah. Cool. Cause it was fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was like, okay, I, I just felt so much better. And I was like, I, I told Ross, and I was like, you're gonna love her, dude. She's awesome. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Kevin, qu same question for you. What was it like being there and seeing your sons win gold? Well, I got to tell you, I am the happiest man you ever met. I've got <laughs> grandchildren, and I've been so proud to watch these boys, both of them, Ross and Marsh. They were phenomenal athletes when they were young, and, and I saw every practice, every game. It was because, not that I'm supportive, but because I really just can't wait to see what they do next. Really, they're just, oh, when I see them in the ring, it's like a, it reminds me so much of my brothers because in between moves, in between you're in the ring, when you're just killing time, it, certain things that happen during a match, I'll see my sons doing it, it'll take me back. And then the way they can read each other's mind is the way my brothers and I did it too. You don't, you don't need to talk. You know what he's about to do. And it's like, it, it's so, it's kind of overwhelming to me, yeah. you know, and like, I don't want to sound like a wimp or whatever but when my boys are wrestling especially with that title match out there i was like getting choked up you know and the camera was right, right on me and so i like crying on tv you know <laughs> i've never done it before you know and i couldn't help it though it was just busting out of me you know and i man it was a, a great night and a, a great title and you know what let me say this dusty was my friend we're old timers, you know, and so it's just like my sons are Dusty's sons and Dustin is my son because it's like a, 
I know how he thinks. He's a Texan. He's made of steel, and he doesn't step backwards. I admire that boy, and he's a hard worker, and he fit right in with my sons. It was a beautiful match. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Actually, that leads to my, my next question. How did you guys all get paired together with, with Dustin? Uh, Ross, do you tell us a little bit of insight in that? We so we were in San, what Marshall was at San Antonio we we're at, but we just happened. It was Austin that we Austin, yeah. We, we just happened to bump into Dustin before the show, and it was really we just hit it right, like right off. It was our first time meeting, and then he's like, "Hey, I'm going to be right back." And he went and talked to, to Tony. I remember that he came into the office. I, I remember exactly yeah, what he said, yeah. but uh, we'll say that for another date. But how did hey. that? <laughs> how did that all? What did he come back with? Well, I want to know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to know what, what he said but anyway he came back later and he's like hey they're kicking around the idea that we might do something together and we just got so pumped we we're like oh man that was that would be so awesome come to find out like okay it's legit we have a six-man tag match and it was probably the funnest shortest match we ever had but we just wanted to do it again so bad and here we are now you know it was awesome and it, it was almost a perfect set of circumstances too when you really think about the fact that we ended up going into our run in arlington we have this vacant set of six-man titles obviously it, it was a spot that very much wanted to see the von eric family and coming off the buzz of the movie and i think everything just worked out in such a way that made for this special moment to happen I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, the the opposition on the other side, working with the Undisputed Kingdom. Oh, that's been because, you know, we've watched these guys for so long anyway, but there's been so many like bucket list matches that we've gotten to do just in the short time we've been over at AEW. Like Roderick Strong, I've always wanted to, you know, get in the ring with him anyway, but. You know, those guys, Dustin told, he prepped us a little bit. He's like, hey, tomorrow's going to be nuts, guys. It's going to be hard hitting. And that's honestly how Ross and I like it. We came up in Japan. We like to feel it. We like to, you know, because my, my dad kind of put that in our heads. He said when he was uh, when he was at Sportatorium, he was playing college football at the same time. And his teammates would want to come watch him wrestle. He's like, I, you know, I, I didn't want to get embarrassed. I wanted them, when they came, I wanted them to to believe what I was doing. And I wanted to, you know, make it something something that they would, you know, go home and be like, what the hell was that, you know? And so he it, it put it in Ross and I's head or in our heads that, you know, we like we we just love that snug style of of wrestling. And they were all about it and, and Dustin prepped us. And so it was just it really was it was the perfect match for us. We loved every second of it. Man, and this whole experience has just been so like humbling. I didn't know how like cool everyone was going to be at AEW, the locker room. It's like the happiest locker room. It really feels like it was just like, it was made for us. Like, that the guy, that, like all the guys in the locker room, it really, we've had some of the best conversations and then the fans, the fans are just unbelievable. We were, you know, so humbled that we, we were able to, to wrestle for AEW in, in the DFW area, Arlington, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio. Uh, being able to do that was it was like a dream come true because Ross and I, we've talked about this for months before we were in talks with anybody. We told, we told each other and dad, especially after the movie came out and we were on busted open and we basically put it out there that we want to, you know, people, when they Google my dad, we want them to, to see the story that his sons are not only doing what he did, following his footsteps, but successful at it. And, you know, we're not in wrestling to get famous or anything like like that we've could have tried to go to wwe a long time ago we we're in it for a totally different reason we want to of course the von erics being a household name that's been a mission but before that it was just a quest to get to know our family better and to prove my dad right my dad really has been the number one supporter from the start and we did not believe in ourselves in japan we were like oh and 70 just getting our butts kicked every day in the dojo doing young boy stuff and it was a, just an extremely humbling experience, but it, it made us fall in love with wrestling because now these payoffs are coming, those years and years of putting in work like that and and then have to have a payoff like that with Dustin, with my dad. It was it was a really like humbling moment. It, it, it 
it was impossible for it to sink in that night. So it took about three or four days. And when we all got home, made eye contact and started talking, it was like, did that really just happen? You know, it's it was emotional and awesome. It just made me re-fall in love with professional wrestling. It's by far the funnest time in my career. My, my sons are starting a, a are really going to shoot to the top. I just know this. They're going to take this business by the storm. They really are. But let me say that I knew this was going to happen. I really did. I always told them, you do your best, you put, you put it out there, but all you've got, and that's where you, the reward is. And, and I just got to tell you, I, I'm so proud of them. And they're the kind of kids I knew people would say, you had it easy because of the Von Erich name. And I put them in that dojo over there in Japan they, for so long. You know, it's a, it's a cement cell. They, they just work out all day long. And it, it's hell. Oh, you know, it's really hell. And I thought it would discourage them. But when they came home, they weren't discouraged. They're a little bit. But <laughs> a good man, it's easy to encourage a good man. And I told them this day was coming, and they didn't believe me, of course. But I knew, I knew it would, and I'm so happy that that here we are. You know, it's just I couldn't be more proud of. Him. There's so many things that that he's ended up being right about. Man, it's just it really was cool, and we feel like we've gotten to know my dad better. Like as we've been wrestling, everything Dad's always said is just makes more and more. Even his sense of humor, like everything, just makes more and more sense. <laughs> and so we've gotten just a lot closer it, we've become you know father and son but it's almost like but he's like our big brother too so it, re it really is wrestling has bonded us even more uh, i love that and and i want to hear more about that this experience in in japan um so i think we'll get to that uh, on the other side of this break uh coming up we've got more here with avon erics right here on aew unrestricted AEW Unrestricted, we've got the Von Ericks, we've got Will Washington, we've got me, Aubrey Edwards. We're we're talking a lot of stuff. This is just a phenomenal family affair on this podcast. As I'm all smiles just sitting here listening to like how great everything is and just how I love that this is like the happy ending almost. Like it's not an end, it's obviously still continuing. It's it's the next chapter, but it's great given that everything you guys have been through as a family and the history of it all, it's nice to see so many positives and to see just you guys with all of your demeanor like kevin being the happiest guy in the world which which we now know um and then you too like marshall and ross just it's all smiles it's all wonderful which is exactly like what wrestling is it's if it's not fun and you're not having fun like why the hell are you doing it right 100 percent, 100 percent. having a great time that's that's the truth 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. so before we get to because we were talking about japan a little bit in our last segment before we get to that i just i have a quick question for kevin how did you feel zach efron did in the movie portraying you I thought he did a great job, really. You know, he didn't know that much about me, but, you know, before I say anything, we should maybe all take a minute. Zach had an, uh, an accident where he, a swimming pool or something, and I think he's doing all right. Everybody say a good prayer for him. Think about him now before you go to bed because he's a great kid. He really is a good guy, and he, he loved the business, and, uh, I mean, he loved doing that match and, and learning wrestling. All of them did, and so uh, I wish him the best. I hope they had a a great career and do well. Awesome. So, so we gotta we gotta talk about Japan. You guys go to the dojo and <laughs> like the Owen seventy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just young boy life, right? <laughs> yeah. Ross, we'll start with you. What was that experience like? The first like week, you're just getting acclimated and stuff, and then of course it's the thousand squats, thousand push ups, thousand jump, you know, all that stuff every day. And then us being new, we had to go in the corner and face the wall, like this close to the wall. We weren't allowed to face the wrestlers as they were training. We were just supposed to shut up and do all our stuff. And then when we're done, then we could lift weights. Like we got the privilege to lift weights. Respect. And then after that, you go down there and you, and you cook the rest of the veterans. You cook their chonko, their food. After a few weeks of it, you're kind of getting acclimated and you're just made peace with being homesick and things are different and nobody speaks the language. Yeah. And once you get past all that, it's anytime someone's in like a kind of a miserable situation, you just make the most of it. And that's kind of, that's kind of what we did. We tried to have fun and joke around and having your brother there made it a lot easier. Yeah. I Cause yeah, we were able to like joke with each other. And what's weird is when you're, in a when you're in a foreign place for long enough like the dumbest stuff will make you laugh and so we 
a lot of that trip where we were, you know, just cracking each other up. But it was a culture shock, 100%. When we first got there, the training was just super intense. And then, you know, the the amount of bumps that we did, it was uh, unbelievable. There's so many bumps. But we, it was cool. They pounded the fundamentals of professional wrestling in us. It was all hip tosses and body slams. and Backdrops. Yeah, backdrops. Oh, my gosh. So many backdrops. And <laughs> we made the mistake of trying to show off when we did a backdrop. Oh, no. The first one I did, I used my arms. And I got way up there and Ross can jump way higher than I can. So he was like, dude, I can outdo you. And he did it even higher. And all the wrestlers stopped working out and circled the ring and said, do it again, do it. And so I think we did like 40 a piece. And then after 20, your, your neck starts giving out and start getting whiplash. And, and it was just, yeah, it was just brutal. And I was like, man, did they see what they want to say? What are they looking for? Like we've, we've, we've done it like 80 times together. You're looking to break your soul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Trying to make you throw up. That's what it felt like. And, but we, it gave us a whole new respect for professional wrestling because it was the way it's looked at over there. It's almost like how we look at NFL football players here. It's uh, very, very respected. And traveling with with Pro Wrestling Noah, we learned so much. And we didn't realize like the legends that were with us, training us, like Morifuji, Kobashi. We studied so much with Shibata so much. That's why it really was like a dream come true getting to meet with Shibata because Shibata is like really was like our Shibata and Kenta. We were our mm-hmm. favorite tag team. And so getting to meet him here at AW was, it was really, really cool for us. We're trying to not look stupid, but yeah, we, we were, we were marking out pretty hard. <laughs> it's, it's really great because I didn't grow up watching wrestling. So a lot of my knowledge of wrestling I'm learning now, embarrassingly. So I didn't know a lot of history about the Von Eric family. So I've been learning a lot in sort of the last year. And when we were going over the match and then someone's like, oh yeah. And then Shibata comes out. I'm like, that seems kind of random. And then like (laughs) hearing about it, it's like, oh, that's not random at all. This is so cool that we can like make this moment come full circle. I know. And it's meaningful for you guys. It's so cool. It was so meaningful. And then not to mention Shibata, I can't believe he's in my phone. He like, he gave me his number. We text now, which is crazy. And he texted me a picture of his dad refing my dad's match blew my mind it, it was crazy because i didn't i didn't even know his dad was a referee so it freaked me out and so it was uh it, it's a so cool it really is so cool like, i i dress like shabbat on purpose i I think shabbat i love that he is just like everybody gets decked out in crazy gear but shabbat is just black trunks his flag simple and he actually complimented me he's like hey I, I like what you i like your attire and i was like man i no one's ever told me i dress cool ever <laughs> like i'm I dress so plain i wear trunks and knee pads that's it. the true statement yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Talking about Japan, but I want to talk about Hawaii because it's it's just such a beautiful place. Kevin, I know that you sort of moved the family over to Hawaii. What was sort of the thing that drew you to such a wonderful place? My sons, really. I feel like it's the most healthy, optimum growing conditions to raise your son. The, mm. They eat fresh fish, fresh fruit. We raise our own sheep. They ate healthy, they woke up healthy, they spear their own fish, they throw the casting net, they can catch crabs in the river, they can go out and get lobsters at midnight on the reef. It's just a natural, good way to raise good, healthy athletes. And I just thought it was perfect for me. Every time I came home from Hawaii, I was so healthy, I practically glowed in the dark. And so I knew it'd be good for them, you know, and it, and it, it really was. It was just, we're just talking about exhaustion. You always go to exhaustion because that's where the prize is. That's my sons. I, was, I wanted them to do their very best. They all they pour their hearts into whatever they do. And so I also want them to have the best food, the best air, the cleanest water, everything I could put together. And thank God it all happened. And here we are. It was like naked and afraid all the time. <laughs> it makes it sound like right no we were talking about it before uh we started recording hawaii is just such a great place because everyone wakes up with the sun and then they go to bed when the sun goes down so i feel like everyone just gets more sleep in hawaii it's like all right it's it's 8 30 it's time to go to bed guys and then it's you're you're right right yeah i've had some like the deepest sleeps when i went back like a few weeks ago i slept outside the whole time i literally slept on the porch and i slept like so deep, I'd wake up. You know when you just come from a deep sleep, mm-hmm. you're just like, "Whoa, what happened?" Like I, it was crazy. I had some of the best sleeps ever in Hawaii. I don't know why. Ross, what's your favorite part of Hawaii? 
probably like the most interesting thing is that you don't need AC. Like as long as you have a fan with the humidity and stuff, yeah, yeah. have that fan blasting on you and you're you're good. It only gets to, like at night it gets like sometimes it'll get low sixties or seventies, but it's perfect no matter what. I like you said low sixties and seventies. It's yeah. like oh, that's the freaking yeah. dream, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you get the hot nights too. But yeah, the fan helps. Yeah. So I, I wanted to ask, with that experience in Hawaii, um, how much exposure to wrestling do you end up getting being in Hawaii at that point? Uh, pretty little. Well, yeah, we're yeah we were midway from Japan, so that that was the cool part. Is our flights to Japan were you know five six hours. The, the it wasn't that bad, and we, we didn't know a lot of like the, the Japanese wrestling history. We were fresh out of like high school. I think we went to Japan when I was about 18 to do the young boy, the young boy thing. We went to Harley races uh, Academy first for two or three weeks. And then um, we met the Japanese scouts there. They came up to me first and said, I said, I look like Fritz von Eric. And I was like, Oh, it's my grandfather. And they're like, Whoa, they freaked what? out. And, <laughs> yeah. They couldn't believe it. And so a great impression. Yeah. And then uh, was, this, is, this is my brother, Ross. And they, you are von Eric and you were brothers. It was awesome. It was the first time that we experienced the name value in a different country. We were in the beginner class, but they, because we were new to wrestling, but they still, they still invited us for the three month tour. And we really didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. So we just accepted, but yeah, we'll do it 100%. But uh, we fell in love with the Japanese style. And I'm so glad that my dad sent us over there because if there was any quit in us, Japan would have gotten it out because if you don't love wrestling, and you're down there and you're forced to do it. You know, it's every day. You live, breathe wrestling. We, our dojo, we lived on, uh, there were cinder blocks with a piece of plywood and then a sleeping bag on top of the plywood. That's what we slept on. And believe it or not, it, it becomes cozy after a while. <laughs> like at your, uh, my little bunk bed, man, I had like little tally marks, uh, tally marks, how many days I was there. And we were like day 60 or whatever. The day we were leaving too, you look back, you're so excited to go home and, kind of felt like a like it really wasn't going to happen <laughs> and it made me fall in love with hawaii too because i'll never forget coming back from japan flying into Kauai, and it's mystic and green and beautiful and you just have been envisioning it in your head for for you know 90 days you've been thinking about it the hard part was we only came home for i think seven days and we had to go back for three months and so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that was the bummer and i was just had gotten a girlfriend and so i was like in the puppy love stage I was like, dude, let's just not, let's, we don't have to go. And I was just like, dude, we're going, we have to go. Um, I was like, ah, dude, man. What's the price? Paying the price. Yep. It was nuts. Pull the price, the other guy won't pay. Yeah, that's true. that's true. It's one of the benefits of having your brother when it's like, oh, nope, we got to make a hard decision, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, we got to go back. Yeah. This is going to be good for us. It's 100%. As much as it sucks to leave, leave your loves behind, it's like, nope, we, we got to do this. And it obviously, it clearly paid off because you guys are just freaking killing it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. This conversation's awesome. We've got more to talk about here on AEW Unrestricted when we return after the break. AEW Unrestricted. We got Von Eriks, Aubrey, and Will. We're talking about lots of stuff. Man, I just really want to go to Hawaii again after that last segment. It's just so freaking, so freaking great. Oh my God. So we, we kind of briefly mention it, just uh, sort of the relationship with Shibata you guys have, and then Marshall, your gear being very, very simple and whatnot. I'm kind of curious, like, was there a conscious decision between you guys to have sort of like different gear and to stand out with each other? Because I know like, Ross, you've got the long tights and you wrestle in shoes and <laughs> Marshall, you <laughs> <Yeah>. don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what was sort of the reasoning there? I think rebellion. I want Ross to dress more simple. So I just go ultra. We started off almost <laughs> identical. We had like matching stuff, except I always had the kick pads and stuff. He's he's been barefoot since day one, and then I don't know. One day I just tried, uh, I just tried wearing pants, and it was just I don't know. Just felt more natural to me. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. When you go, and that was a tough pill to swallow. When you first get into wrestling and it's foreign to you, and you're feel like you're going out there in your underwear pretty much. It that that was that was hard to get used to, especially our debut in Japan was at yokohama and so it was like our it was like a big match and i was so i was still trying to get past like i feel like i'm wearing tidy whities right now and damn, i have to go look comfortable <laughs> you know like and so i or look like i'm confident and comfortable and supposed to be there so that was uh i was definitely pants were in my head i was like man i 
it would be a lot easier, <laughs> but I didn't want to wear pants and no shoes. I felt like it looked weird. So, so I was like, I'll just stick to the trunks. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think it's, it's a good mix. If you were going to go the no shoes route, I think the trunks definitely work. So good, good yeah. decision there. Yeah. My dad though, he, he can do no knee pads and doesn't look weird. Like uh, if I do no knee pads, it really does look like I'm just in my underwear. But for him, if for some reason, he still looks like a fighter. I don't know why. <laughs> He can pull it off. I was like that too. I remember I thought that it was just like being in my underwear. The first match or first few matches, I thought, man, yeah, I can't believe I'm going to go out there and part naked. But you get way <laughs> you really do, but you feel it at first. Oh. <laughs> and then eventually you just get used to it, right? Eventually, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, well, one experience I wanted to ask you guys about, it's two names that are really important to both the AEW family and Ring of Honor lore. But almost two years ago to the day you guys got to wrestle Jay and Mark Briscoe. You talk a little bit about that experience of working with uh, with Jay and Mark and, and what would be, you know, we obviously didn't know at the time, but what would end up being uh, some of the last of what uh, Jay Briscoe was able to do. Man, that was probably the most unique experience or unique match we've ever had. Marsha, you get your go ahead and tell them all the stuff leading up to it and everything. Well, well, yeah, because we went to the Pro Wrestling Noah Dojo and there's pictures of them all over the wall. They were they were like us, but you know they were like maybe five or six years before us. They came to the dojo, did exactly what we did, and then it almost felt like we were chasing them because all of our mentors said, you know, watch the Briscoes, watch the Briscoes, because you know they're an American team, they're brothers, and so we loved like their dynamic how they like communicated and my brother and i we're, we're pretty weird people like we're not super social we find a building we people like dustin too he's like where the hell do you guys go you guys just disappear but we we like we'll walk around we'll go to like we'll walk around the building go on the roof you know and just get our heads together you know talk or whatever and we never met any, anybody else like that until we met the briscoes at the Rip flair show i feel like it's kind of it's hard to get close to either uh ross and i uh when we're separate but when you talk to us both you can get closer to us for some reason i don't know why and um briscoe's it kind of felt like that like we didn't hit it off super hard when we first got there we were really really late to the show because missed flights and delayed flight no delayed flights and then we had gotten there like maybe 15 minutes before our match so our match got pushed to like i think it was semi-main event it got pushed back and so it was kind of cool like oh sweet we're on with the last matches now but when we got there we didn't have time to really talk about anything. So it was a lot of just improv. And uh, when we went out there, we had the match right after the match. We just fell in love with those guys, man. They were, they're like, they're real brothers. There, there were, there's so many similarities and they gave us great advice. You know, every, when we were growing up, we hated seeing brothers that weren't close. Like, man, you got a brother, man, like go hang out. Like, you see brothers at school that wouldn't, wouldn't talk to each other, had different friend groups. It had always kind of, bothered it bothered me but when me and ross when we went to japan we got really 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 close and it gave me a ton of respect for my dad because i have one brother every story i have in professional wrestling he's a part of it he was he was there the entire ride with me and you've heard that saying your parents they're in they're not in your life long enough your kids come in too late but your siblings are there for the whole ride my brother's been there from the start and so i got one my dad had five and for him to lose that it made me and Ross just like, you know, treasure the relationship we have together. We should really try to not think about yesterday. Don't look too far in the future, but just be in the moment because, you know, you, tomorrow isn't guaranteed. And to, to be in the moment and have a brother to keep you conscious of that all the time. If I start stressing out about something, you know, don't take yourself so serious. It is having someone there to constantly bring you down or bring, bring you back down to, to a normal level. You know, it's been, I don't know if I would wrestle without my brother. I really don't know. It would be. Um, if I maybe if I started without him, I could see how it could. But now it'd just be too painful because I every memory I have of wrestling, the smell of a locker room, every bit of it would might remind me of my brother. So I have so much respect for Mark, man. Every time I see him, I want to cry, you know, because I just love the guy so much. And when we saw him last time, we I was telling him like, dude, the the whole world loves you, man. And and it's almost like you feel like you know. Him. And he's just so like kind and genuine i would do anything for for mark and i think the whole world feels like that too especially the, the pro wrestling world 100 i think he's one of he's just a great man he really is just a great dude mark briscoe's like everyone's favorite person he's just the absolute 100 yeah. absolutely yeah. love it 100 percent. i want to talk more about sort of the the brotherly love and all of this but i, I want to hear kind of ross's thoughts on being a part of the match with the briscoes so like you said we showed up 
way late. We had to get dressed in the Uber on the way there. Just, we just got out in full gear and ran in there and like had probably two and a half minutes to get a general gist and then go out there. And then it was just, we kind of had to go out there thinking, okay, at the end of the day, we're, we're professionals and we're just going to make do with what we got, man, just working with them and then being exactly where you expect them to be. And, uh, and, you know, vice versa, it was a lot of chemistry. I think we just, you know, hit it off, especially after the match. Cause before the match, like we did, couldn't even really talk or anything, but yeah, after the match, we had that moment when we're all just, you know, rejoicing about, you know, it's like, man, we, we made it happen. We made it work. It was fun. Man, I'm never going to forget that. It was, you know, what a great experience. And then being at Ric Flair's retirement match, it was huge for us. Just a lot of history in wrestling. Oh, man. Yeah. Kevin, sort of a question for you as a, as a father. You're obviously very proud of your sons and everything they've achieved in wrestling. But I'm curious kind of what your thoughts were when you found out that the boys really wanted to pursue wrestling. I tried to, I really, my dad tried to discourage us from this one, you know, and mm -hmm. and I really thought that I discouraged them with the Japan, you know, and moving them out in the middle of the ocean, but mm -hmm. they wanted to uh, do it so much that that's no shocking. They were going to do it, you know, and uh, I had a long career in wrestling, you know, I wrestled all the champions in their prime, and when you all talk about the Briscoe brothers, it reminded me of Jack Briscoe. I wrestled him in St. Louis and around Chicago and all, and he was real quiet. Jack just didn't say a thing, you know, and I mean, there were so many great champions. I was able to wrestle all of them, you know, and I was just, uh, but uh, Jack Briscoe was a, was a great champion. He was like textbook. He did everything well enough to be the champ, you know, and I mean, I don't take anything from uh, away from Ric Flair or Harley or Dory or Terry Funk or even uh, Luthes because they were all all good men, but each one had their own. Like take, you can take Harley Race. I've told people before he was like a battleship. What, what more you put Harley through, he liked it. He wanted more. That's Harley. And now Rick is uh, smart. Rick would take us. We're young kids. He'd get us in the ring, make us get exhausted. You know, he was an expert. He knew exactly what he's doing. And you know, after you've wrestled one or two times, you know, I'm always going to be in shape and I'll never get tired in the ring again. But he'd do that on purpose, you know. And, yeah. and Dory and Terry Funk were like that. They were just the best ever. And I'd, I would say they were like Harley and like Rick. They were smart, but they also knew every hold, every takedown, every finish, every submission, everything. They're just experts. I was really fortunate to be able to, to wrestle with so many of them, but those, uh, Maybe think about Jack Briscoe because he never said a word. Never. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people in wrestling. Like whenever you say like someone uh, like a champion who doesn't say a word, I immediately think of John Moxley, who's just kind of like quiet, like yeah. sits himself. But the moment you get him going, you're like oh, he's going. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> so great. Kevin, I just want to ask you, what does it mean to you to have your boys carrying on the Von Erich name and sort of creating this new chapter in your family's history? Well, there was a time it seemed like it was all about just winning that big match, you know. And, uh, but then it developed differently. When I had my brothers with me, you know, with you know, we were always so close, and we were, you know, we were good at wrestling, you know, and we were, and so we we really started liking it a lot more once we started doing it. We liked it just at first because my dad did it. Then we started getting really good at it. We knew what we were doing. We understood the business. It just got more and more and more fun, and it became more about things we do together like that six man tag title to us was bigger than the world title i'm not just saying that i really mean that it was that's just the way it is i guess it's because you make little personal milestones that you hope to achieve in your in your career and as they go it's just your career just gets bigger and bigger and one day you think hey i'm famous <laughs> you know and i would have never <laughs> thought that you know <laughs> i thought i was just adequate yeah this is just this has just been such a great conversation. Guys, I want to thank you all for making the time to chat with us today. Ross, Marshall, congratulations on being uh the Ring of Honor World Six Man Champions. Kevin, I'm just so happy that you've gotten to be a part of your boys' journeys and this this incredible moment in both Ring of Honor history, but also the Von Eric history. Yeah. It's just been such so great, like getting to know all of you. You're all just absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Smiles all around. I love it. It's yeah. you guys are the <laughs> best. You. It's so, so awesome. Life is good. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. You're awesome too. Thank you so much.
Oh, you guys are the best. This is <laughs> AEW Unrestricted. You can listen to new episodes of our podcast on all of your favorite audio platforms on Thursdays. You can watch the video version and see all these wonderful boys smiling uh, as they all talk about all the things that they love. New episodes every Monday on our YouTube channel. You can watch Dynamite on Wednesdays on TBS. You can watch Rampage on Fridays on TNT. You can watch Collision on Saturdays on TNT. And of course, you can watch these guys uh, representing Ring of Honor Thursdays on Honor Club. I am Aubrey Edwards with my best friend, Will Washington. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up.